As Las Vegas saddles up for the National Finals Rodeo in December, a rodeo less familiar to the masses is steering this Western tradition rooted in athleticism and honor. Cowboys competed in the Las Vegas Black Rodeo to celebrate African American history and culture. And this morning I show you how black cowboys and cowgirls are reintroducing the legacy of their ancestors of the Wild West. Right here. Here's Austin Taylor. It's a tough road. Oh, boy. It's a bit of drilling direction. It's definitely not a dime breed. Whether it's bull riding or calf flipping, cowboying takes a special set of skills. But competing in a rodeo, specifically the Las Vegas Black Rodeo at Horseman Park, well, that's a whole nother animal. You gotta have strength, you gotta be smart. Darrell Carmooch has been a cowboy all his life and has competed in rodeo since he was 12. But as a black cowboy, he says breaking into mainstream competitions is harder than breaking in a wild horse. You have your times when you have to go through some racism or you have people look down on you because they feel like, you know, you don't have a good horse. Or, so that's only motivates me. Darrell's plight is ironic considering the history of the cowboy. Black people were the first cowboys ever. The image of the black cowboy is overshadowed by its white counterpart in film and pop culture. However, white cowboys were originally called cow hands. Back in the day, of course, they used to call us boy, and the person who owned the ranch that we were working for, they'll tell us, hey, go get that cow, boy. During slavery and the plantation era of the South, demeaningly calling African-American men boy was a Southern racial etiquette that followed pioneers out West. But the strength, skill, and spirit of the black cowboy kept on riding through the Civil War and beyond. You gotta know where you came from if you wanna know where you're going. In 1866, a year after the Civil War, Congress established six all-black regiments to help rebuild the country. They didn't know what to do with them after the Civil War, so they formed two regiments of black soldiers and they sent them out west. The Southern Nevada Buffalo Soldiers represented the 9th and 10th Horse Cavalry. Buffalo Soldiers were the first forest rangers. They escorted stagecoaches, and they battled with indigenous people protecting neighborhoods these black soldiers weren't even allowed to enter because of the color of their skin. They were some of the, some of the excellent horsemen, even though they had inferior equipment. Historians estimate black cowboys in the American West accounted for up to 25% of cowboys from the 1860s to the 1880s. Who wants this to be a married horse because he don't want to go home? This is the history passed on through Black Rodeo USA. The Black Rodeo giving these cowboys and cowgirls a chance chance to professionally compete when their grandparents and great-grandparents were historically excluded from local rodeos. We want to showcase all the talents that African Americans possess, and especially in the sport of, um, in the arena sport. Black communities, whatever, that they can do a lot of other things besides play baseball and football. You know, you can be a rodeo cowboy or cowgirl. It's only a handful of us blacks that travel out there when we should have more because I mean, we have a lot of good black athletes, but they just won't step out of their comfort zone. Stepping out of his comfort zone is how Tory Johnson became a bull riding calf flipping steer wrestling rodeo champion. I'm a professional cowboy, so I travel on the on the, the, the big the big lead, you know. My ultimate goal is to get to the NFR. Johnson and Karamooch, just a couple of dozens of cowboys and cowgirls resurrecting rodeo traditions within the African-American community while reclaiming cowboy culture.